before you can crochet, you need to have your supplies. To begin, you just need a hook, some yarn, some scissors, and a needle. You need some light colored yarn, a worsted weight. I have a Vanna's Choice yarn here, but doesn't matter. You can use um, any light colored yarn. Here's some impeccable. That's a light color. Doesn't have to be beige, just any light colored yarn because it's easiest to see your stitches when you're using light colored yarn when you're first starting out. Of course, as you get more proficient, you can use any kind of yarn. So you'll need a hook. I have a boy, just a, a cheap boy hook that I got at Walmart or uh, wherever. Uh, this happens to be a J size. And you'll need a needle to sew in your ends. Um, this is a number 16 um, needle and this is a, a larger, thicker needle for working with um, chunky yarn. Well, we're going to go further than that, give you a little bit more information when you're talking about hooks and yarn and um, the various supplies. There's a lot of other supplies, for example, um, stitch markers. There's many, many different kinds. Uh, this is the kind that, that I use and it's to mark where you are in your piece if you have to do counting or perhaps you're working in a spiral where you don't uh, chain up uh, to, to start your new round. For whatever reason, if you need a marker, there's many different kinds and that would be something that you could, you could use. Um, you might need to get a, a ruler or um, a tape measure. I have uh, a couple of different ones here. In fact, I have tape measures all over, rulers all over the house. Um, and th these can be used if your project needs to be a certain size. Um, also, if you are working to gauge, you'll need a ruler to measure your gauge. A ruler is better for that because it's, um, it's stiff. Uh, whereas your, your cloth um, tape measure is a little flexible. It won't give you quite as accurate um, a measurement. Now, uh, hooks. I have many, many, many different kinds of hooks. This is a uh, my Crimis hook from Jimbo uh, that I won. Um, I don't remember what size this is. Uh, an I, I think. Um, that's one hook that I have. This is a my favorite L hook. It's got a breast cancer ribbon um, in it. This is made out of Corian. That's the stuff that you make your countertops in your kitchen or bathroom. I also, I just this is a new hook that I bought at um, Hobby Lobby, and it's an L hook with I think this is bamboo uh, handle. Uh, this is another Corian hook. It's a um, M size M hook that was made for me. As you can see, there's many many different types of hooks. I have a bunch of. Just, just my regular hooks. These are my Inex and Boy hooks. And um, I think this is a rosewood hook. Um, this is a number, another Jimbo hook. This is an egg hook. If you have trouble with arthritis or um, carpal tunnel or uh, any kind of problems with your hands, this is an excellent hook to try. It's very smooth. And um, of course you would be using, you wouldn't do it, you wouldn't use it with a pencil hole, you'd use it with a knife hole, but uh, it would be very, this is an L, but I have have them in several sizes, and really, really works, fits in your hand well. If you're going to work with uh, thread, which I'll show you in a little while, um, I have several hooks that have a large handle, but a steel hook on the end and steel hooks are what you use when you're working with thread. Just wanted to show you a few of my other hooks and give you an idea. This is a lighted hook. Let's see if you can see it better. See how it lights up? My battery is a little low but the end lights up and so you could use this hook in the dark. I think it's called needle light. You just turn the knob to turn it off and on. This one is a beautiful hook. And I have several different kinds of clay hooks. This is uh, one of them. This is a Brittany hook. 
there's lots of um, different sizes. You can say it says this is an M, and it gives you the, the letter and the millimeter, 9 millimeter Brittany hooks. And that's a brand of hooks. This is another steel hook with a very thick handle. Very good for working. I don't know what size this is, but it's uh, got a very tiny hook. So another tool that you might want is a, um, one of the metal things that, can, that help you know what size your hooks are. This is a cute little hook that I bought um, on eBay. This is one of the soft touch. This is a tulip hook. It's got a soft rubbery feel to it. It's very comfortable to hold. This is a plastic hook. It's uh, called baleen. The name is baleen, but it's just a, a plastic hook. It's not true baleen. This is a um, chopstick. See the letters on it? Not English. It's a chopstick made like a hook. There's another um, one of my steel hooks with the big handle. I love these. This is a trigger hook. Um, I think it's called minnow grip. And you do it just like as if you would be holding a gun, I guess. Um, and it's very easy to work. Very, it fits your hand very well. Here's another hook that I have. It's an Addy 5.5. It's just a different shape. Which hook works best for you is just going to depend on you and how you like to hold your, your hooks. There's another hook with a flexible bendy. That doesn't bend a lot, but it's a flexible and this is rubbery, so it makes it easy. Uh, you notice in the hooks too the difference in the hook itself. You don't have a lot of play here on this one, and this one you have more. This is another lighted hook with a shorter um, base. If you can tell, it's on here. And this is a brass hook that I got. It's got a nice handle. Here's a thread. This is a classic number, Aunt Lydia's number 10 thread. And I don't know if it tells you what size hook that you need. Yes, it says a 1.5 millimeter number seven hook. I probably wouldn't use that small hook myself because it's so tiny. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to see it. But um, the hook size that is recommended on your labels is just a recommendation, a suggestion. You can use that or not. This is a size zero. And you see that size zero, whereas um, this one here is a category three. This is acrylic yarn, uh, Motodea Sassy Stripes. I wouldn't use this yarn to learn with because it's got all the different colors and it's a variegated yarn, uh, but it's a number three. And uh, I would say most often people use the number four, the category four yarn which the, um, this is impeccable by uh, Michael's Loops and Thread and um, the Vanna's Choice is also a number four. They have it in different places on the, the, in the number. This particular one recommends a J-hook. See what the impeccable recommends. Re impeccable recommends an H-hook. Now this is Chunky Yarn, Northland Chunky Yarn. And it would need, of course, a bigger hook. This is a number six, category six. And it recommends an M hook, which would be like this one. This is an M. I probably would even use a bigger hook. It depends what you're making, whether you want a stiff yarn, close knit, or if you want it to be loose. So I wanted to show you the different different yarns. This is a um, 
a variegated yarn, but it's wrinkly. It's kind of got, I don't know if you can see, tell that. It's not a smooth yarn. So it would also not be a good one to learn uh, with. What I found in teaching is uh, a chunky yarn like this. Sometimes the student will um, will get confused thinking that the individual threads of the chunky yarn are stitches. So um, for that reason, I stick to the worsted weight yarns. This is a very, I don't have the label, I don't know what, what um, it's probably a zero. This is a very, very thin yarn. It's, it's also not um, a single color, but it's, I think it could be used, but I wouldn't start off with a steel hook as a first project. Uh, this is also the impeccable yarn, but it's a dark color, and it wouldn't be as easy for a beginner to see the stitches. This is cotton yarn, as also the Aunt, uh, Aunt Lydia's was also a cotton. This is a cotton yarn, but it's a worsted weight yarn, and it comes in this cone. So you would use the same, uh, whatever the recommended hook is, probably an H or something like that, uh, to make dishcloths or purses or whatever you wanted to work with that. This is also a cotton yarn. This is, I love this cotton. It's a Hobby Lobby brand. There's an I hook recommended for this. Oh, it's a number four, category four. I can hardly see that. They make these labels really tiny. and But it's a light color and you could use it. Um, I don't recommend cotton for learning because it doesn't flow as smoothly through your hook. I would recommend more of an acrylic yarn for that. This is um, actually, it's called yarn, but it's really, really uh, stiff. And um, this is for pla working with plastic canvas. You could crochet with it, but you would be, you would use it maybe if you were making, say, a flower pot hanger or something like that. You wouldn't use it for clothes. This is another cotton yarn. Knit Picks this is a very nice, smooth, um, soft yarn. It says number four, but it is actually kind of thin. Um, Pima cotton, it's cotton acrylic, it's a combination yarn. This color is whisker, it's very, very pretty. What else I got here? And this is also cotton thread, this would be thread. Very thin, if you can see how thin that is compared to this. Compare the two. See the difference? How thin that is. Wow. There's many, 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 many different kinds of yarn. You would choose the yarn that's recommended for your project or the yarn that uh, you enjoy working with. You don't necessarily have to use the yarn that's recommended as long as your gauge is, is the same. This is a tool I use to make a uh, fringe. It's by Susan Bates. You might need a needle threader. This is uh, Loran. Doesn't matter. Any whatever kind works for you. There's different kinds. This is a different another hook. It comes with its own little cover. I find these tend to break easily. So you have to be careful with them. Another tool you might like to have once you get going is a um, yarn winder. This is the one that I have. It attaches to a table to keep it from going anywhere and then you, you um, just have to turn the handle to wind your yarn. This is a pom-pom maker. I've actually never used it because I don't really make pom-poms. Here's more needles. If you do broomstick lace, these are broomstick lace pins. That's a different type of crochet. You use a crochet hook and these long knitting pins. This is a number 50 and this is a 30, number 35. 
another tool that you can add to your crochet arsenal is the afghan hook for Tunisian crochet. This one's kind of beat up, but um, this is just an aluminum hook with a, an, an end, a button end. Another thing that you might want to have handy for reference is a how-to book that you can refer to. You can usually find just about anything online, but um, some books that I've used in teaching is the Annie's Attic I Can Crochet. I think it might be out of print, but you can usually find it on eBay or uh, places like that. Uh, it's set, it's geared towards the young person, um, preteen, and it gives some really nice projects to do. This is another book I have. It has very nice illustrations that you can uh, see. Um, this is the How to Crochet by the National Needlework Association. Um, this one I know is still around. I can't believe I'm crocheting. It's going through several um, different editions and there's some nice projects in here. Of course, um, nice illustrations. This is uh, another one, Learn to Crochet in Just One Day by American School of Needlework. This is the left-handed version, but there is a right-handed version as well. This is by Jean Leinhauser. It also gives nice information. I find, I don't, I haven't found any one book that has everything I want in it, everything I'd like to have, so I like to have a variety. You can also pick up some uh, crochet magazines, usually in your, your bookstores will have different ones and you might see a project that you like. That They're not as good for learning to crochet, but once you know how. Um, this is a nice reference book all about crochet. Uh, it's a dictionary of crochet stitches and techniques and it does have a lot of good information in it. The illustrations are not quite as big as in some of the other how-to books, but um, it gives you a lot of information. And there's another one that I have. I have lots of books and I couldn't, I couldn't show you all of them, but here's a few. Teach Yourself Visually Crocheting. It's exactly what it says. It's a visual book. Lots of pictures and details on how to, to do different things. And it gives you more than your basics. There's your basic techniques, but then it also gives you, uh, this is the spike stitch and cross stitches and different things, how to combine stitches. So this is a nice book. And of course, Pauline Turner, she's just the guru of crochet from across the pond from me. But uh, this is just one of her books. She has many books, and she also has a class that she teaches. Um, through correspondence and this gives you a lot of information here. So to reiterate your basics, a hook, yarn, scissors, and a needle to sew in your tails. You don't even really need a pattern. You just start off with your basic stitches. This is not a tutorial on that. This is a one on supplies, so we're not going to go into the actual stitches. But you can just make a foundation chain and just go along and, and make a baby blanket or um, squares or whatever. Dish cloths with your cotton yarn. Um, you don't even need a pattern for that. But um, once you get going, you may want to uh, find patterns uh, on the internet or in books. I have many, many, many pattern books. Um, that I'll never make all the projects in them. Um, and then when you you know how to crochet, you can go into some of these specialty yarns like this one. This is a uh, Vanna's Choice Glitter Glamour, and uh, it's glittery and shiny. A very nice yarn if you want to make like a a dress up purse or or something like that. Very nice yarn. Very soft. And I think that's it for supplies.